If you hadn't guessed from my whole YouTube channel, I'm passionate about structural engineering. So today I'll be going into detail about what drives my passion for structural engineering and where I see structural engineering going into the future. But let's look back over the past 12 months as I've come a long way. As you can see, I was quite awkward, but my confidence slowly built over time to create better content for you. Only up until recently, you can see that I've changed my set, fixed up the cameras, and now we're up to about 5,500 subscribers. I'd like to thank you all for hitting this milestone in under a year. So what drives my passion for structural engineering? When I was younger, it was probably more of a passion for engineering than structural engineering specifically. See, I like to pull stuff apart, work out how things go together and put them back together again. Maintain things. When I got older, I like to pull apart cars, I like to service my cars. I'm sure this is similar to many of you in my audience. But later on, I became good at maths and physics. That combined with my engineering skills that really drove me down the passion for civil engineers. And civil engineering is one of those skill sets that you help affect many lives around you. Anything that was built around you needed a civil engineer involved. Whether it be that little bridge, high rise, or even small building, a civil engineer has had some impact in there. So civil engineers can affect whether you work, live, or play, but also that ability to shape the skyline of either Melbourne, Sydney, or Brisbane. It's not only that, it's also the maths and physics and science and the practicality behind it. So the more I learn about structural engineering, the more I enjoy it. So drilling down in detail about how specific elements go together, how materials behave, Recently, I've had to really drill down on the specifics of how structural elements actually behave and interact with each other. So it's not just trying to learn those skills, creating connections between timber and concrete and steel and how materials behave. Because there's all these inter little interactions about how structures actually behave and where forces flow through your structure. That is really quite exciting. And some of the secondary actions as well can be quite complex. And when you think about those secondary actions, it gives you more of an insight about how structures behave and the interactions between them. Now, this is something that drives me as well because I like to give this across to more people and this is where my YouTube channel comes in. So hopefully, so you can short circuit some of the learnings that I've had to do over time. And unfortunately with structural engineering, as we can see with some of the videos that I've also created about analyzing disasters, some of the major failures are done by some of the best engineers in the world. And it's just from something that we didn't know at the time. So sometimes we need to make sure that we're on top of our game, making sure we're up with the latest standards and knowledge, as sometimes standards do not keep up with the actual structural knowledge that we're learning in universities. If you're interested in structural engineering, don't forget to smash that like button. Not only does it help me out, but also works out the type of content to create for you. So where do I see structural engineering going into the future? Well, I can see that it's gonna be more automated. Computers are gonna be more involved, and there's gonna be less grunt work done by engineers. And this is even for some of the programs that I'm writing, trying to automate the processes of bulk things like columns, wall design, or header beam design. But it does not mean that structural engineers will be get written of, because we need some sort of human input, as a computer is only as good as the input that we give it. it means there'll be less iterations and less of that grunt work that we need to do, so we'll have more time to do the more detailed analysis in specific areas where we actually need to drill down on and less time in doing those repetitive calculations like slab design, column design, or wall design. So what does it mean? It means that you need to be able to manipulate data, which will mean that you'll need to learn a programming language. How to automate processes, as not every program will be best suited for it, and you may need to have some sort of modification to that program to ensure that it's designing the building correctly. And when we're getting those inputs, we also still need to have good understanding of hand computations and analysis. As if you get the model output, how are you gonna analyze whether it's correct or not, whether it's in the ballpark? So it means that engineers are still gonna to need to do some hand assessment, maybe not the whole building, but specific areas to ensure that the modeling output is correct. You also need to be able to interpret that model to make sure there's been nothing missed or some misinterpretation in the modeling in the software. Say for example, if you've got an ETABS model and you've got a giant wall, it thinks there's multiple floors in and it may actually think there's a restraint there, but there's actually a big void. Now the program doesn't know that and may design that as a single height wall when the wall is actually double height. So sometimes it may be overestimating loads, sometimes it may be underestimating loads, and either sometimes the behavior of the model will be incorrect or something won't be connected. There's gonna be more of an integration between also the BIM modeling and the analysis. You see, there's quite a lot of errors being input from that copy and paste errors. So what happens is at the moment, a structural engineer does an assessment on a model, does a hand markup, gives it to someone else. They then interpret that hand markup and that goes onto the page. 
So as there is human inputs multiple times in this process, there means there's multiple places where someone could have copied it down wrong or interpreted it wrong. So it means that it gets onto the drawings incorrectly. So trying to break down some of those elements to make sure that we're linking up our analysis with our modeling to make sure they're producing the same integral design means that we'll have less errors in those aspects. But also when that gets onto the page, sometimes there is needed to be a rationalization as the computer will just go, okay, I need N16s here, I need N20s here, I need N12s here. And you may have to modify where you got the N20s, where those transitions are, to make sure it's easy to build as someone's gonna have to put this structure together. Also over time, it's more likely that the construction work is gonna become more automated. So it means there'll be more responsibility to make sure that our models are correct, up to date, to make sure the computer just puts it together as you will not have the human input on site, which is putting something that goes, oh, that looks weird. And they may ask the structural engineer, the computer will just put it together. So it means that we'll have more responsibilities to ensure that everything is correct as it's really the final word, of what gets built on site. So engineering is going a long way and it means that you need to try and build additional skills. So the most highly sought of skills that I see in the next five, 10, 15 years are programming skills, are ways to analyze and assess buildings for FE analysis, and also moving into that communication skills. As anyone can really design or analyze a building as we're making it more simple, means that your communication skills will have to be improved greater and greater, to become more of an all-rounder. So you're talking to the clients, you're talking to the builders, you're talking to multiple different stakeholders that may have a varying level of skill set. So something that you should work on into the future, both your written, verbal, and schematic designs to make sure you're interpreting the data correctly to give as much information across to the client as physically possible. If you're interested in supporting the channel, like these members here that have helped make this content possible, see the links down below. And as always, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye.